address this on our show. Blowing the lid up, Lisa. The eye surgery even eye doctors won't get. I had stabbing eye pain. There are complications. Our undercover investigation. There's LASIK patients a couple years later, half of them were wearing glasses again. That's not true. What she said is true. And the alarming side effects. His eye pain eventually cost him his life. That makes my blood boil. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. It's the world's most popular elective surgery, LASIK. It promises your eyesight will go from this to this. But what if LASIK could cause your eyes to see this? Or even this. When I heard how life altering these side effects could be, I needed to know why. So I sent investigative reporter Elizabeth Levy to go undercover to find out. It feels like somebody has sandpapered the back of my eyes. I had stabbing eye pain. This is about my mother. She had LASIK eye surgery and she went blind from it. Yet despite the horror stories, every year 800,000 people get LASIK. Many lured by the ads. Looking from glasses and contacts. You're only minutes away from seeing 2020 or better. But those are false promises. FDA clinical trial data shows even the most modern laser left one out of every five patients seeing worse after LASIK than they used to with glasses. LASIK is the one surgery that eye doctors will not get. Dr. Cynthia Mackay is one of them. If you type into Google LASIK complications, you'll get pages and pages. You can never predict when an eye is going to go wrong after LASIK. Here's what can go wrong. Patients may achieve 20-20 vision on an eye chart, but be seeing that chart in double, or seeing halos or starbursts, especially at night. And the most common problem of all, dry eye pain, sometimes so severe that a few people have reportedly committed suicide. All he would talk about was his eye pain and his eyes and how he couldn't live that way and it eventually cost him his life. So we went undercover to see what LASIK centers tell patients in person. Could I really pass away in my glasses with the ads to me? You can, yes. Charge you 15 minutes. Right after that, you can go even off the wall. We have the technology to get rid of the new glasses. And we felt like we were in a business office rather than a doctor's office. We do offer two year interest refinancing if that's something that interests you. How many of you guys do a day? Today we're doing with 14. Wow. And when we asked about side effects, the LASIK specialist downplayed them. Are the dry eyes temporary? It is. Not that common. I would say it happens. I shouldn't worry about the night vision. Okay. I want to say zero, and certainly less than one percent chance. Morris Waxler is the former FDA official responsible for getting LASIK approved, but now he's a whistleblower campaigning to get it banned. Haziness, halos, dry eyes. The industry was able to convince the agency to discount those as as mere side effects. Waxler says those so-called side effects are actually injuries, and if you count them correctly, LASIK harms 20% of patients. The FDA was hoodwinked. They are not telling us enough on the front end about these complications. So, definitely, caveat and tour. Elizabeth joins us. You've been pursuing this story for two years. Uh, what tipped you off that there was a problem? You know, when I got a lead on this former FDA official turned whistleblower, I was riveted because in this day and age, how often do people admit that they might have made a mistake? And if he's right about that 20% injury rate, that is troubling. I mean, this is a completely unnecessary procedure on a very necessary part of your body. So ideally, the injury rate would be more like zero. So I thought we'd start this conversation by walking folks through what is actually happening in LASIK surgery. So come on over. I think it actually, when you see it, appears riskier than it looks or sounds. So I'm going to hand that to you. All right. We built you an eyeball. This is literally what it looks like, sort of a model that's pretty representative. And when the operation is done, they start by cutting a flap. Now, the flap is made with a laser or, 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 or a knife 
similar to this. It gets under there and lifts a flat of the top level of the eye off. This is called the cornea. And it flips it up like this. And then Elizabeth can demonstrate what's done next. A laser is beamed into the eye in that gap that's been created. And with that, they can actually reshape the cornea. And when you do that, you can change the way you'll see either up close or far away. When the LASIK procedure is done, this top part, this part of the cornea that's been sliced, is replaced where it needs to be. And once it's in the right spot, it stays. Now, that's the goal. But what are the complications that sometimes happen with this, Elizabeth? Well, the flap really is a key part of it. They can cut it too thin, too thick. Very rarely they slice all the way through. But even if they get it perfect, when they put it back down, just like we're struggling with, it doesn't necessarily heal perfectly. Studies show that it's kind of like a Tupperware container. It seals up around the edges, but not necessarily in the middle. So years later, you can be rubbing your eye or your child can poke you in the eye, and that thing can come dislodged. And when it does become dislodged, this gap that rep is represented in this little model becomes a big issue. And, you know, it can be subtle, right? You jump into a pool, an accident, kid poke you like this, and all of a sudden, this like jack-in-the-box is off where it's supposed to be. And that can trigger negative side effects, like the ones we've heard about in that piece, halo, starburst, double vision. It's one of the reasons that when I spoke to a prominent ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, he said that not one of the eye doctors in his facility had had LASIK surgery. Nevertheless, they're very popular, and they're strong advocates for them who have points. So I'd like to have you meet Dr. Julia Shulman. He's a member of the American Academy of Ophthalmology. He's an advocate of LASIK and performs up to 10 procedures himself. Do you believe it's safe? Dr. written the book that articulates quite nicely how it should be done and, and why it is safe. When you hear some other stories of patients who are describing the severity of the injuries that they believe they've suffered, how do you respond to their thoughts? I don't want to minimize any complications in any patient that is suffering. To be honest with you, my blood is boiling a little bit now after hearing, hearing all this because LASIK today, in the right patient who has reasonable expectations done with modern lasers by a skilled doctor, is one of the safest operations that can be performed. Uh, the complication rate is <clears throat> way less than 1%. So you raised several issues, but then tackled them one by one. You mentioned a complication rate of less than 1%. And yet, I, mean, I reviewed the main paper that the FDA published, uh, or the published with FDA data on this, and the complication rates for glare, for halos, for poor night vision, and for dryness. That number was around 20%. Totally wrong. Well, I'm sorry. It, it was published a few years ago, but it, it's the data that we had, actually, that seems to be the most comprehensive. More importantly, I you know, reached out to the American Academy of Ophthalmology and the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery for a statement. I'll just share that with you. They said, research has shown that more than 95% of the millions of people worldwide who've had LASIK are satisfied with the results. Those studies also show patients who experienced side effects became satisfied when the symptoms were addressed by their doctor. So that all makes sense to me. But the question I'm trying to get at is, you know, whatever percentage it is, getting back to Elizabeth's point, this is, and, and not, it's not a mandatory operation on a very essential organ. Let me share what the FDA said. The FDA considers LASIK lasers to be reasonably safe and effective when used as intended. The operative word, of course, is reasonably. What's reasonable to you might not be reasonable to somebody else. The FDA actually points out to everybody, because this actually does bother me a lot. The FDA has been studying long-term results of LASIK, the kind of data that we need to give good advice for four years, they're still doing it because they're getting lots of patient complaints. Where's the data? It has not been published yet. That makes my blood boil. Mm -hmm. We can do better than that. So Dr. Shulman, part of the problem, I believe, and please help me if you think this is wrong, is that not all centers are created equal. And there are some top-notch facilities doing LASIK surgery, and there are some facilities, like perhaps the ones that Elizabeth visited, that are, are not so reputable. How is someone out there who's watching this show right now going to figure out which center to go to, which is the safe one for them? It's not an easy decision. It's not the center, it's the doctor. At the end, of, you know, it's the doctor that's doing the procedure. So you have to trust the actual doctor who's doing the procedure. So how do you find that doctor? Okay, the best way is to look at the doctor you're seeing now. If you're seeing an eye doctor who you trust, you've seen over the years, the doctor has the right skill set and is recommending the procedure to you you may not have to look any further. But if you ask anyone who's had LASIK and are successful with it, it doesn't mean you are going to be successful. Your refractive error may be different, your eye may be different, everything may be different. 
Elizabeth, help me understand who, who should be a candidate, and is anyone a good candidate for LASIK surgery in your opinion? Well, if somebody has heard all the risks we raised today and is still interested, maybe that makes them a candidate, but they must go into it, and I think you would agree, realizing that it's a completely elective procedure done mostly for looks and convenience, that sometimes it doesn't last. Consumer Reports did a survey and found that uh, LASIK patients a couple years later, half of them were wearing glasses again. That's not true. And I, I, well, that, 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 that's factually true. Okay. What she said is true. The Consumer Reports paper, and again, I did my homework on this, as I, I always do on my shows, 55% right. of patients who had LASIK surgery were wearing eyeglasses. They may be wearing glasses for reading, it wasn't driving at night. Um, patients, all patients who we counsel are told you may you can't throw away your glasses for life. You may need them part time. That is the advertisement I have seen personally. I've seen the ad where they got with the I don't I'm not saying it's you, okay. and it may not be offending them, but the ad is to throw your glasses away for good. That's not true. Well, I mean, I never say that. And most reputable doctors say the opposite. You cannot think you're going to throw your glasses away. You'll always need them part time. So on that point. I'm going to give my final thoughts. Okay. If you have vehement disagreements with them, please voice them to hell. <laughs> and I thought, folks, I thought this too carefully. This is the most common elective operation we're doing around the world. I don't take this too serious lightly, and I like, thank you very much for spending the deep, the deep dive time it took to really go through this. But when we have FDA whistleblowers and the agency being inundated with complaints from patients, I thought we had to address this on our show. I don't want you being lured in by the fanciness or convenience of a LASIK center that offers you 2020 vision or your money back. Now, I think reputable doctors aren't going to try to con you with that. They're going to say there are no guarantees in medicine because they're not. Next, if you decide LASIK is really for you, I recommend getting at least this protective technique one eye at a time. You have two. Get one eye done at a time. That way something goes wrong, you still have one safe eye. And finally, I'm calling on the FDA to publish the results of their study on long-term effects of LASIK so we really know what we're dealing with and patients can make informed decisions. It's been four years in the making and still nothing. We'll be right back. Can I 